Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and if you want to catch my newest video, I post one every day. In this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Sunrun stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Sunrun is a provider of residential solar panels and home batteries headquartered in San Francisco, California. The company installs, maintains, monitors, and repairs solar panels. It IPO'd in 2015 at $14 a share. In 2019, it expanded to Puerto Rico. With operations in 23 states, DC and Puerto Rico, it became the largest solar company in America, surpassing Solar City. In July of 2020, the company announced it was acquiring Vivint Solar for $3.2 billion. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 16.5 billion market cap. They're trading at $84 a share and they have 196 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So you can see the company has negative free cash flow every year. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have negative net income every year. Revenue is a sales for the company. And that grows nicely from 2017 to 2019, but drops a little in a trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. Example is the cost of the materials. The difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. Then you have operating expenses. Examples are depreciation and insurance expense. Below that is their operating income and they have negative operating income every year. Below that is the interest they pay in their debt. Then other income and expenses. These are usually non-cash gains and losses. Then their pre-tax income. Then their taxes. The bottom line of their income statement is their net income. And that was negative 416 million. It seems to be getting worse each year. This is the statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus capex gives you your free cash flow. So you can see the company has a big negative each year, not only because they're generating negative operating cash flow, but because they're investing so much back into their business. The idea is that when a company invests so much in their business using capital expenditures, their free cash flow in the future will be much higher, assuming everything goes right. Since the company is losing so much money, they need funds from somewhere to run their business, so they issue debt. They issued 900 million in 2017, paid down 500 million, so they added 400 million of debt in 2017. They added 700 million in 2018, 500 million in 2019, and 500 million in a trailing 12 months. The most important part of any business is their operating cash flow. If you cannot generate positive operating cash flow at some point, you don't have much of a business because you cannot rely on debt and equity financing to run your business in the long term. This company has negative operating cash flow because they're aggressively trying to grow their business. Net income is a company's accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. You can think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash. And the way you calculate operating cash flow, you start with net income, then you have to add or subtract the non-cash items on the income statement. They passed through a $200 million depreciation expense. They had $44 million in stock-based compensation and negative $84 million in changes in working capital. Even though they reported a $400 million loss, they actually lost $265 million of cash flow from their operational business. Let's look at the capital structure. $1.3 billion of equity, $2.6 billion of debt. They're 34% equity, 66% debt and their WAC is 18%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 23 billion. 
we discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $14 billion. We divide that by 196 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $72. They're trading at $84. So they're trading at a 17% premium. It's a sell according to the model. You can see the stock was flat for a few years. Then it's been really driven up the past few months. So if you bought the stock down here, a lot of people may have gotten upset because the stock was flat for so long. But if you would have held out, you could have had a really nice return. This company has a really high beta, 2.21. So the stock moves more than two times the market. It's very volatile. And the stock has gone up 280% in the past 52 weeks. Much better than the S&P 500, which went up 17%. The 52-week low was $8 and the high was 101. That is quite a spread. And the stock is trading above its 50 day and 200 day moving average. About 5 million shares are traded each day on this stock. And of the 197 million shares outstanding, 146 million are on float, 73% are held by institutions, and it has a pretty high short percentage. Over 15% of the shares on float are shorted. If you invested $10,000 into this company when it IPO'd in 2015, you probably would have sold when it was in the red because most people sell when things go down. But if you would have held out, you'd be at almost $80,000 today. That's an average annual return of 45%. FMR is their biggest shareholder at 15%, then BlackRock, then another company at 9%, then Blackstone, and last is Tiger Global. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average PE in the market's nine, the median is 14. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. When a company has negative PE, most investors look at the price to sales ratio. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. They're at 19, so investors are paying $19 for $1 revenue. Obviously, this ratio is a lot worse than it was a few months ago when the stock price was much lower. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. They're at 12. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. They have negative EBIT, so they have negative interest coverage ratio. ROE is net income over equity. Negative net income, negative ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. They have a good current ratio, 1.4 and their current assets are 270 million of cash, 80 million of receivables, and 260 million of inventory. So the company is undercapitalized because it had negative 1.1 billion of free cash flow and 200 million of working capital. So they're gonna need more debt or equity financing to run their business over the next 12 months. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Canadian Solar, Enphase, and First Solar, all in the same industry as Sunrun. And if Sunrun has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they're worse in PE because they're negative. The other companies are positive. They're worse in price to sales. They are doing better in price to book because Enphase has such a high price to book ratio. They're doing fine in current ratio since they're above one. They have a terrible ROE. They do have a lot of debt. And they are larger than the average company at 16 billion market cap. To summarize, I have this company trading at a 17% premium, but I wouldn't be surprised if the stock price got pushed higher and higher because the solar craze is unbelievable and a lot of stocks are getting pushed up even though they have weak fundamentals. But this company is doing a good job at growing their business, so I think there's a good chance they will have positive free cash flow in a couple of years. And this is not a new company. They've been around 14 years, so I think they know what they're doing at this point. I rank their free cash flows 1 out of 10 because they're negative every year. I rank their revenue 5 out of 10 because it was growing nicely from 2017 to 2019. And I rank their ratios 2 out of 10, mainly because they have negative net income. So they have negative PE and a negative ROE. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.